Joe Underhill. Was fun to have the river semester students in here. Uh, uh, it'll be fun to get back out on the river uh, on Monday. Uh, welcome everyone to this closing plenary of the 2018 Nobel Peace Prize Forum here in Minneapolis. Um, it's been a packed, a rich three days here uh, with dialogue and inspiration. Uh, new ideas, challenging, uh, I challenging thoughts, uh, and speakers, networking, and uh, even time for some relaxation and art and music along the way. We hope that, we fa that you found this forum uh, inspiring and challenging, and that you leave here with new ways to engage in peacemaking, the fight for justice, and to help heal this wounded world. I'd like to take a moment now to thank all of the people, because really there are just uh, hundreds and hundreds, really, who have made this event possible. Uh, first of all, our sponsors, the University of Minnesota, Youth Thrive, the National Youth Leadership Conference, Pacific Lutheran University, Carleton College, Sanford Health, 3M, Winds of Peace, and all of our other generous partners and supporters. We really couldn't have done this without you. I would also like to acknowledge the incredible effort, uh, the sweat equity, if you will, and hard work of the events staff here, of heroic productions, catering facilities, the athletics uh, departments here for sharing their space with us, all of the volunteers who have uh, so generously donated their time, the custodians, the grounds crew, and everyone else who has made this event possible and so deserve our thanks. Please join me in a round of applause. In the face of ongoing brutal conflicts around the globe, violence in our own communities, increasing dysfunction, to say the least, in Washington, increasingly extreme weather events such as those that we ex are experiencing right now in the Philippines and in the Carolinas here, uh, extremist violence and other challenges, it's sometimes hard to find inspiration or hope. The challenge, challenges before us are indeed great but as our speakers here have so powerfully demonstrated, so are the signs of hope. This is our call to take the knowledge, the skills, the new friendships and connections that you've hopefully made here into your lives, your studies, your work in community. In all that work, we all have roles to play as advocates, educators, researchers, healers, mediators. Today, we lift up in particular the work of women and the voices and actors at the margins speaking truth to power, standing up for what's right, and humbly and patiently working to make the world a place in which justice, love, and peace are more fully realized. In the past three days, we've heard from and been inspired by so many powerful women, Beatrice Finn, Maya Sotero Ng, Daira Quinones, Claudia Lopez, Nancy Lindborg, Priscilla Hayner, Dalit Mukolan, Rosalind Lapierre, Precious Peary, and I could go on and on. They have shown us what it means to live out what Audre Lorde, I think, meant when she wrote, when I dare to be powerful, to use my strength in the service of my vision, then it becomes less and less important whether I'm afraid. These women have led the way like those who stood up to sexism and sexual violence in the Me Too movement, in those that have challenged human trafficking, advocated for human rights, practiced compassion in the face of resurgent nationalism and xenophobia, and fought to protect water and honor the earth. And on that list as well, those that have fought so powerfully and effectively to rid the planet of the most powerful and destructive weapons yet devised by humankind, uh, 
the nuclear weapons and the wonderful achievements of ICANN. It's my pleasure now, once again, to welcome back to the Nobel Peace Prize Forum stage the Executive Director of the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons, Beatrice Finn, recipient of the 2017 Nobel Peace Prize. She will offer some remarks and at the conclusion of them, uh, she will be joined on stage by representatives of uh, some of the other nuclear ban groups that are joined us here today for a final call to action and recognition of their work. Uh, and then we will move on to our closing music and ceremony uh, following that. Please welcome uh, now to the stage, Beatrice Finn. Hi, everyone. God, I feel like I haven't stopped talking today. You must be really tired of me. <laughs> um, I, I want to thank you all again for this incredible two days. It's been really invigorating for me personally and deeply valuable for our ongoing work of ICANN. I told a group of understandably a bit surprised young people yesterday that one person cannot change the world. And while not perhaps a popular sentiment, uh, the reality, as any campaigner knows, is that communities change the world. People working side by side with conviction and purpose change the world. Friends, colleagues, neighbors, and occasionally strangers. Inspiring and supporting each other is how we change the world. And that's why this Nobel Peace Prize Forum is such an incredible addition to peace building landscape. And I really commend you all here for what you've built and what you are building here at the forum. One of the strangest aspects of the nuclear weapons issue is really how many people have agreed that nuclear weapons are an unacceptable threat to humanity. From the very scientists themselves who discovered and weaponized nuclear technology to the president who ordered the only nuclear strike in history to leaders in the early days of the Cold War to Reagan and Gorbachev who sought a path to denuclearization all the way to Donald Trump's comments ahead of his meeting with Putin this summer saying we should really, ideally, get rid of nuclear weapons. There has really been consistent agreement by everyone that we should stop this madness. But leaders have not said that we should not get rid of nuclear weapons, but they've said that we can't. Uh, Donald Trump even agrees that the world would be better off without nuclear weapons, but said maybe that's a dream. And though we in this movement are optimists, we are not simply dreamers. We are the realists facing squarely up to the threat of nuclear weapons and formulating a plan to act. Believing that we can keep them indefinitely, that's the dream. That's the magical thinking, and that is not a solution. And through the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, we have a plan, and we have a legal framework, and we have the momentum right now. So what we need is you. We must all get involved. We must claim our right to speak and act on this issue. Uh, nuclear weapons may not be on the ballot this November, but we need to bring democracy to the summit, and we need to make it the issue. We need to find ways to take action in a local context, to have national, local, and global impact. Why shouldn't this be the very city on the growing list supporting the Nuclear Ban Treaty, for example? A few weeks ago in Massachusetts, local political candidates and a member of the US House of Representatives pledged to support the TPNW. So where do your representatives stand on this issue? And here's the straightforward plan for how you work together to achieve a world free from the threat of nuclear weapons. Educate, motivate, and activate. And educate. Learn how your community, the banks and services you use are complicit in developing nuclear weapons. Share with others the reality of the threat, the grave humanitarian harm that will follow any nuclear attack, and will spread across the borders. Do not let people forget these weapons exist until it's too late. And motivate. Tell people about the treaty. 
Most people still don't have any idea that the nuclear ban treaty was adopted. And they need to know that change is not just possible, but it's coming. That they have the agency on this issue and that we have momentum on this cause. And activate. Find concrete steps to take together with others. Engage with our partner at nuclearban.us and back from the brain campaign with calls to the US to take steps to reduce the threat of nuclear weapons. But don't stop there. Set the bar high. Tell your government and tell your representatives that the US should join the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. As we've learned over the past decade, bringing the treaty into existence, it will be impossible until enough of us decide that it's inevitable. As often happens with movements of great change, they told us that our mission was impossible. Crazy, even. As living under the constant threat of total nuclear destruction is any less crazy. And when we achieved the adoption of the treaty, they said that those opposed to change then often do. It's insignificant, it doesn't matter. None of the nuclear arms states are on board. The US strongly opposes it. And to those people who say that, I say, you haven't met some of the people in this room. We can't afford to wait for one leader to rise and change policy for us. We can't count on the people in power getting together and choosing sanity and security over fear and instability. We can't leave this to the naive dreamers. We need the doers. And I met really so many doers today and yesterday and I really look forward to standing shoulder to shoulder with you as we march forward to a world unbound from the chains of nuclear weapons and living here free in a world of increased equality, security, and peace. So thank you. The doers. Hello, greetings. Beatrice said this morning that politicians will be asked to reject nuclear weapons if they want to be elected. Make her statement true. Do not let this November pass without asking your member of Congress, your mayor, your city council member to reject nuclear weapons. And we are here to offer you the tools to do that. If you don't know how to get in touch, if you don't know what to do next, talk to us. We offer the tools to not let another election day go by without asking our elected officials to reject nuclear weapons. I'm Marie Brown with Women Against Military Madness. And when we heard about the people coming together to agree on a treaty, we decided to start the campaign to ban nuclear weapons. We've been at it for a couple of years now. We have a good campaign going, and we'd like to invite all of you to support our campaign or look at the materials in our campaign, say, I will start my own campaign. I think it would be wonderful if we had a Mankato campaign to ban nuclear weapons, a Grand Rapids campaign to ban nuclear weapons, an Augsburg campaign to ban nuclear weapons, a St. Thomas campaign to ban nuclear weapons, and together we can do this, we can get a bill passed by the state of Minnesota. Let's do it. As Beatrice has said, the people who believe that it is not possible to make nuclear weapons illegal need to get out of the way of the people who are doing it. Be the people who are doing it. Join us. Join nuclearban.us. Join ICANN. Divest your own money from nuclear weapons and those of your institutions and your pension funds. Look at Don't Bank on the Bomb, the report that tells you who's invested in what. And join the right side of history. Thank you. So if you've been inspired this weekend, and particularly today, by the movement of the international campaign to abolish nuclear weapons, if that's something that's 
uh, has, has excited you at all, then we, we are waiting for you. I mean, ICANN is a global network of hundreds of organizations, and we, we're, we're trying to do the same thing here in the US and really make a difference with people coming together all around the country uh, and uh, following the, the example and, the, and the, the, uh, the energy and the enthusiasm and the hope that comes from ICANN and from this treaty, we, can really, we really can make a difference. And we're gonna work closely with our partners in uh, the Twin Cities area, but we want to see the universities uh, and uh, faith communities you know, stepping up and, and standing up and, and speaking out on this issue so we can really make a difference. Thanks. That was Tim and Wallace from NuclearBand.us. I'm Vicki Elson from NuclearBand.us. I'm going to put it right here so you can't miss it. This is uh, the ICANN implementation campaign here in the United States. And if you're local, we're doing an event night after tomorrow night, so Monday night in Minneapolis. If you're interested, I'll be standing right here. Um, come get a flyer. Meanwhile, the rest of you, we hope to see you in cyberspace at nuclearband.us and everywhere else where you can make a difference because every single person in this room can make an enormous difference towards getting rid of nuclear weapons forever. Steve McEwen from Veterans for Peace. Uh, we're together with Women Against Military Madness. And uh, part of our campaign to ban nuclear weapons, uh, you'll see over, over by the door over here that there's a map of Minnesota. And there's pins in those maps. Currently there's 473 pins in there that, uh, that state that uh, residents from those towns and cities have signed petitions in support of ICANN's, uh, for the ICANN, support ICANN for the UN Treaty to Ban Nuclear Weapons. There's 865 cities and towns in Minnesota incorporated. Now, Beatrice has said that we should be doing some celebrating now and then. And when it comes time for that 865th uh, signature on there, we're going to ask Beatrice to call, you know, for that person signing, and then we're going to celebrate. But also, there's one other thing that we in Veterans for Peace and Women Against Military Madness would like to present to Beatrice and to the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons. They, of course, won the Nobel Peace Prize. In 1929, another person who, whom Kellogg Boulevard is named for, Frank Kellogg, is the only Minnesota never to have won the Nobel Peace Prize. And he won it by passing a law with the foreign minister from France, Brienne, it's called the kellogg brien Pact. It outlaws war. It was the biggest news story then. It was ratified by the U.S. Senate in a vote of 85 to 1, and the only person that voted against it said it wasn't strong enough. That was the result of the greatest peace movement the world has ever seen after the war to end wars. And so we're called to replicate that movement to get rid of these weapons. And so I'd like to present Beatrice with what it says. It's Kellogg's own writing on there. This is from the Historical Society. It says, I will not be satisfied until every home, school, office, factory, church, and public building has a framed copy. Your desire expressed will be law and gospel to millions. Speak out. Hold not your peace. This is the kellogg brien Pact, the law against war that the United States pushed and is still law. It's the reason why the Nazis were prosecuted after World War II, and it's still law today, and it's the foundation of international law. Beatrice? I'm not sure I'm going to say anything more. Just thank you. This is really, really amazing. This is really, really great. And thank you all for a fantastic time here. And thanks to doers.
please welcome to the stage Managing Director of the Nobel Peace Prize Forum, Bettina Hermansen. Thank you. Um, I just want to give another applause for Beatrice Finn, who has worked so hard over the two days, several sessions all day long. She flies home tonight. She flies to Paris on Monday. She flies to Canada on Friday. It takes a lot of work to do this and to do it well. So give her another round of applause. And I think, too, with all the organizations that were up on stage today, that I think we can all easily find a way to support this effort. So I encourage you all to get involved. Thank you. Um, I would like now to introduce one of our artists from Colombia. And I think you have seen her, most likely, in one of the sessions prior to this one. But I would like to give you um, an introduction and to let you know a little bit more about her. Um, Daida Quinones is an Afro-Colombian human rights defender, singer, and peace builder who creates songs and stories of resistance and peace. Amidst escalating violence in post-accords Colombia, Quinones builds women-led movements and organizations that fight for complete reparations, including territory, of crimes committed during the conflict and um, she strives to direct participation of all victims. Quinones was displaced from her own ancestral lands in Tumaco, Colombia, and began organizing with other displaced Afro-Colombian, indigenous, and Campesina women in Bogota, creating spaces of sharing and hope. Please help me welcome Quinones. En el cierre importante de este foro in para the, el mundo, in the important closing of this forum for the world, la voz de Colombia, the voice of Colombia, y la voz de la gente que busca la paz, and the voice of the people that look for peace, está aquí presente con todos nosotros, is here with all of us today present. En cada territorio de Colombia estamos buscando la paz. In every territory in Colombia, we are looking for peace. Desde el norte al sur, desde el sur al occidente y hacia el oriente estamos buscando la paz. From the north to the south, from the east to the west, we are looking for peace. Sin embargo, esa paz tan anhelada que hemos venido construyendo. Nevertheless, this situation that we've been constructing, Cada día está amenazada. every day this peace process is threatened. Y tenemos muchas barreras. And we have many obstacles. Necesitamos levantar la voz en el mundo. We need to lift the voices in the world Para cumplir con esta tarea. to be able to succeed with this challenge de que nuestros niños that our children nuestros jóvenes our young people las mujeres y todas las familias the women in all families cumplan con este propósito central la paz are able to achieve this central goal peace con la implementación de los acuerdos se levantaron nuevos grupos Armados. With the creation of the peace accords, new dissident groups actually rose up against it. Y cada día seguimos perdiendo más gente. Every day we continue to lose even more people. Yo vengo aquí. I come here. A seguir levantando la voz. To continue lifting my voice. Y ese es el mensaje que traigo con estas tres 
canciones. And that's the message that I bring with these three songs. Y quiero que todo el público se levante a cantar. Aquí estamos, así somos, con una esperanza que abre caminos. And I want everyone to stand and to sing, here we are, this is who we are, with hope, with hope for peace. Porque esta voz es una voz para el mundo. Because this voice is a voice for the world. Y este es un llamado de todos los pueblos ancestrales del mundo. And this is a call for all the ancestral energy of the world. Y es un mandato de los pueblos que me han encargado a mí hoy en este escenario. And this is the task that the Colombian people have given me to bring here today. Aquí estamos, así somos, aquí estamos, así somos, con una esperanza, con una esperanza que abre camino, con una esperanza, con una esperanza que abre camino, aquí estamos, así somos. Aquí estamos, así somos, con una esperanza, con una esperanza que abre caminos, con una esperanza, con una esperanza que abre caminos, con la mano arriba, con la mano abajo, con la mano arriba. Con la mano abajo que ha llegado el plan Colombia, se remola el paso y aquí estamos, así somos, aquí estamos, así somos, con una esperanza, con una esperanza que abre camino, con una esperanza, con una esperanza que abre camino. Con la mano arriba, con la mano abajo, con la mano arriba, con la mano abajo, construyendo pueblo, abramosle paso, construyendo pueblo, abramosle paso, y aquí estamos, así somos, aquí estamos. Así somos, con una esperanza, con una esperanza que abre camino, con una esperanza, con una esperanza que abre camino, aquí estamos, así somos, aquí estamos, así somos, con una esperanza, con una esperanza que abre camino. Esa esperanza this hope de caminar buscando la paz of walking searching to find peace es el sueño is the dream del mundo of the world y todos juntos vamos a lograrlo un día and all of us together are going to achieve this one day y si nosotros no lo alcanzamos lo verán nuestros nietos and if we don't achieve that, our grandchildren will see it. O las generaciones we'll, futuras. They will achieve it. Ahora traemos una canción que se llama Nostalgia en el mar. Now I'm going to sing a song that's nostalgia for the sea, for the ocean. Como un homenaje a la tierra y a las aguas. As an, an homage to the land and the waters. A los animales. To the animals a todo lo que tiene vida en esta tierra to everything that has life on this planet earth que también son afectadas día a día por las guerras que se dan en el mundo that every day are affected by the wars that go on around the world ya se está acabando la riqueza Ya se está acabando la riqueza del mar. Ya se está 
acabando la riqueza del mar. Ya se está acabando la riqueza del mar. En la nostalgia del mar salieron los calamares. En la nostalgia del mar salieron los calamares. Dicen, dicen, corra niño, conozca nuestros pesares. Dicen, dicen, corra niño, conozca nuestros pesares. Que se está acabando la riqueza del mar. Que se está acabando la riqueza del mar. Que se está acabando. Do you remember when we went to fish, we would grab the shells? La sangara y los piacuiles. This fish and that fish that I can't translate. Pero ahora nos trajeron un trasmayo electrónico. But now they bought they brought a big electronic. Y no nos está quedando na. And they're now they're not sharing it with us. Vengan, vengan a la fiesta, que en ella sí cantarán. Vengan, vengan a la fiesta, que en ella sí cantarán. Toditos los animales hoy en coro van a cantar. Toditos los animales hoy en coro van a cantar. Que se está acabando. Ay, 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 que se está acabando. And the third song se llama homenaje a la vida. is called Homage to Life. Esta canción surgió en el momento más difícil de mi vida. This song rose up inside me in the most difficult time of my life. Cuando mi madre fue violentada sexualmente when y tirada a un pozo. When my mother was sexually violated and thrown into a well. Y yo estaba en Bogotá y no pude ir a su entierro. And I was in Bogotá and I could not go to her burial. Y entendí and I understood que coger un arma no era lo adecuado. You couldn't grab a sufficient weapon. Sino seguir haciendo lo que ella me había enseñado. Without seguir haciendo lo que ella me había enseñado. And so I needed to do, continue doing what she had taught me. Que es construir paz. Which is to build peace. Nació esta canción que está ayudando en Colombia a seguir construyendo la paz que necesitamos y sanando gente en los territorios. This song was born to help healing people in Colombia and constructing peace. Y en esta canción saquen todo lo que está en su ser, en su espíritu y en su corazón si le dicen un sí a la paz. And in this song take all the power from yourself, from your being, from your spirit, from your heart, and say yes to constructing peace. La vida es como un poema, por eso voy a cantar. La vida es como un poema, por eso voy a cantar. Con cada paso que pisa, mi si puede llegar, la vida es como un poema y que viva, 
Que viva la vida, la vida es como un poema y que viva, que viva la vida. Vamos a hacer todos este coro que dice que viva la vida. Que viva la vida. Everyone la gets vida to join es in. como un poema y que viva. Que viva la vida. La vida es como un poema y que viva. Que viva la vida. La vida es como un poema y que viva. Que viva la vida. Los valores que son grandes están ocultos sin resplandecer. Los valores que son grandes están ocultos sin resplandecer. ¿Cómo podemos hacer para romper y vencer? ¿Cómo podemos hacer para romper y vencer? La vida es como un poema y que viva, que viva la, la vida. vida. La vida es como un poema y que viva, que, que viva, viva la, la vida. vida. Hoy damos gracias a Dios por habernos dado la vida. Hoy damos gracias a Dios por habernos dado la vida, por todos los beneficios, por el aire que respiro, por todos los beneficios, por el aire que respiro. La vida es como un poema y que viva, que viva la vida. La vida es como un poema y que viva. No más violencia, yo se los pido, por favor. Que viva la vida. Porque la vida, la vida se vuelve canción. Que viva la vida. Yo voy cantando, voy caminando, cantando voy. Que viva la vida. Un canto de paz, un canto de fe, un canto de amor. Que viva la vida. Porque la vida, la vida es amor, la vida es canción. Que viva la vida. La vida es vida y solo Dios no la debe quitar. Que viva la vida. Porque la vida, la vida es amor, la vida es canción. Que viva la vida. La vida es vida y solo Dios no la debe quitar. Que viva la vida. Las mujeres canten, las jóvenes bailan, que cante. Que viva la vida. Porque la vida, la vida es amor, la vida es canción. Que viva la vida. Porque la vida, la vida es vida, se los digo yo. Porque la vida, la vida es amor, la vida es canción. Que viva la vida. Porque la vida, la vida es amor, la vida es canción. La vida es vida y solo Dios no la debe quitar. Que viva la vida. Que viva la vida ahora y siempre se los pido yo. La vida es amor, la vida es canción Que viva la vida Yo voy cantando y voy caminando Cantando voy Que viva la vida Yo voy cantando, voy caminando Cantando voy Que viva la vida Que la vida, la vida es amor La vida es canción Que las mujeres cantan y los niños bailen Que canten que la vida, la vida es amor, la vida es canción. Que viva la vida ahora y siempre por la vida voy. Yo voy cantando un canto de paz, un canto de amor. Yo voy cantando un canto de paz, un canto de amor. Porque la vida, la vida es amor, la vida es canción. Que viva la vida. Que viva la vida. Que viva, que viva ahora y siempre la vida. Un aplauso para nuestro músico de Costa Rica. De, ah, ah, tú mismo.
Dilo. Soy de Jamaica. ¿De dónde? Jamaica. De Jamaica. Un aplauso. Sí. Para toda la gente latina de Ecuador, la gente de Colombia, la gente que está aquí tomando las fotos desde Boyacá, desde el Cauca. Cauca, arriba. Arriba, arriba Cauca. Cauca. Sí. Sí podemos hacer la paz. Yes, Gracias a la universidad, a todos los organizadores por darnos la participación. Thank a los pueblos de Colombia por estar aquí. Muchas gracias. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How do you follow that act, right? Thank you, Daida, so much for your song, for your courage, for your wisdom. Um, I think, yes. One thing that Senator to uh, Torres Ray said yesterday was no justice, no peace, and we know that there's been a lot of work uh, in regards to the peace accords in Colombia, but we also know that there's a lot more work to be done. So thank you for that ongoing work, Daida. Um, I would like now to um, introduce or, or um, ask to come back on stage Paul Pribernau, who is the president for Augsburg University, and he's going to share a little bit about news for next year. So please help me welcome Paul Pribernau. Thank you, Patina. Because everyone else is using their other scripts, I'm going to go here and find my script. So I've got wonderful things to say. I'd say that one of the things is that this... Uh, that always impresses me is the ways in which we uh, bring artists into the Peace Prize Forum. So our musicians, our dancers from last night, the visual artists that did the wonderful displays, we are so, so grateful for them for the ways that they illustrate how peacemaking is linked in so many ways to the arts and to the ways that they make our life more lively. So here's what I need to tell you. For the past 30 years, we've had the privilege of working together with an amazing group of partners and sponsors in these forums, which have gathered Nobel laureates and global leaders, from Norman Borlaug, Wangari Matai, Muhammad Yunus, Lema Bowie, Tawako Karman, Jimmy Carter, the Dalai Lama, the Tunisian National Dialogue Quartet, President Santos, the International Campaign to Ban Nuclear Weapons. The list has gone on and on for 30 years, and we have so appreciated this partnership. Started as a group of the five schools that were founded by Norwegian pioneers here on the, on the prairie some 150 years ago. Augsburg, Augustana University in Sioux Falls, Concordia College, Luther College, and St. Olaf College. The unique relationship with the Norwegian Nobel Institute, which traces and helps us to keep the link to our Norwegian heritage, has provided amazing educational opportunities for our students and our communities, and inspired thousands of young peacemakers to go out into the world to live out the values and vision of Alfred Nobel, to promote peace and justice in the world. This year marks a significant transition, both an end and a beginning. Starting next year under the direction of the Norwegian Nobel Institute, the Nobel Peace Prize Forum will be held annually in a different city, bringing these same amazing laureates to audiences around the globe. We in the upper Midwest have enjoyed this unique privilege for three decades, but it's now time to share these opportunities more broadly, and we are proud to know that the programming and inspiration that these Nobel Peace Prize forums have provided to our audiences for so many years will now serve as the basis for this new series of global events. For us and for our growing number of partners and supporters, Rest assured that this marks simply the beginning of a new era in providing a world-class forum that highlights our commitment to global citizenship, social justice, and peacemaking. Although, for, although the forum next year will not bear the Nobel name, it will have largely the same kinds of content and caliber of speakers. We are excited about the possibilities provided by being able to branch out more widely from the work of recent Nobel laureates to engage with innovative and powerful young change agents and peacemakers. And we would like to invite you, invite everyone, to the 2019 Forum right here in this location on September 13th and 14th, 2019. 
on the theme of transformations, climate change, climate justice, and political action. We will explore the challenges and opportunities of responding to the increasingly urgent problem of climate change. We will honor the work of local and global climate change organizations, from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change to 350.org and the Minnesota-based Fresh Energy as we explore the profound transitions and transformations that are part of moving toward more sustainable economic and social systems and practices. We look forward to welcome you all back here next year into an event which promises to be every bit as exciting and inspiring as those we have had, have had the privilege to have at our various campuses over these past 30 years. And now I'd like to invite back to the stage Bettina Hermanson and Joe Underhill, the Managing and Program Director of the Nobel Peace For Prize Forum. And as they come forward, I'm going to ask us to give them a special round of applause because for the past two years, they have been partners in peacemaking and putting together this remarkable event. And they have done a wonderful job for all of us. And I want them to know how grateful we all are for their hard work and vision. So thank you, Bettina. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. As we have experienced over these past few days, the work of peacemaking takes many forms. It has a place for everyone. It includes work on conflict resolution and disarmament, on improving health care, on being careful stewards of the environment, creating a just and equitable economic system, and protecting human rights. In closing, we would like to honor all the peacemakers in the hall this afternoon. As a way to recognize the work that we all can do and are doing, we have asked the 2017 Nobel Peace Prize laureate Beatrice Finn and other keynote speakers to help us celebrate these local peacemakers. For our closing ceremony, I would now like to invite these peacemakers on stage to help us recognizing the new generation of peacemakers here in the hall today. Please welcome back on stage Beatrice Finn, Marie Brown, Daida Quinones, Maria Ovidia, Rosalind Lapierre, and Dalit Golan. Another group that we would like to invite up um, is the young peacemakers who are here with us today, the peace scholars from Aug uh, Augsburg University, Augustana University, Concordia College, Luther, St. Olaf, University of Hawaii, and University of uh, California, Sacramento State, or Sacramento. Yay! These peace scholars were awarded a seven-week academic experience held at the Nansen Dialogue Network in Lillehammer at the University and the University of Oslo International Summer School, participating in a program designed to deepen students' understanding of the central issues and theories regarding conflict, war, and peace. We would like to take this moment to thank Liev Dahl, the Gary Smaby Foundation, Carolyn Schuler for their longtime support to this program. Give them a hand. In addition, I would like to acknowledge Turil Holmstad and Michelle Fredrickson who lead this program, and to Stein Labrin for his leadership and the programming he provides for these students during their time at the Nansen Center for Peace and Dialogue in Lillehammer. Thank you. We encourage students out there to apply to be a Peace Scholar for the 2019 school year by visiting the website and submitting your application by this coming February 1. We're also uh, pleased to announce that uh, this year we have a new program, uh, a local version of the Peace Scholars program funded by the generous support of Joe Schwartzberg and the Work Workable World Trust. Uh, this will be a cohort of 24 students, four from each of uh, six schools here in the Twin Cities, 
who will work together over the course of the year, attend events such as this one, collaborate on work as global citizens to promote the work of the UN and the Sustainable Development Goals. So please uh, be in touch with our office, the Nobel Peace Prize Forum Office at Augsburg. Visit us at peace.augsburg.edu um, to find out more information about that program and uh, encourage uh, students to apply for that as well. So now we would like to invite to the stage uh, this year's Peace Scholars, along with a, a small number of representatives from this year's participants, some of our volunteers and staff from the off audience, or from our office, excuse me, to receive a sunflower from one of the platform party here. Sunflowers have the special ability to not only track the sun with their, with their blossom, and absorb solar energy, but they can also absorb nuclear radiation. They have this amazing ability, one of these many gifts that nature gives to us. And as such, we're using them today as a way to honor and recognize the work of ICANN and its partner organizations in their work to make sure that the only nuclear energy we use is that which we receive so bountifully every day from the sun. So please come forward now as your name is called to receive a flower from one of our platform party and then please just uh, line up along the stage here. Um, so, and I think Bettina, you'll read the names. Please welcome to the stage, Christian Evans. <laughs> Alexis Dorfman, Manal Ali, Samson Mettler, Alyssa Armstrong, Sabina Beck, Rebecca Green, Asisa Ahmed, Sarah Ward, Ulysses Jovel, Pearl McAndrews, Naneo Lowe, and Donna Mose, Chelsea Erling, and Nazanin Sadati. We would also like to welcome up on stage Kidist Wazanieli from YouThrive and Bayan Abu Ati from NYLC. Please also come up to the stage Didier Balonas, Allison Mangan, Camila Payan, Tarek Adin, Jessica Mendoza, Mahmoud Driat, and Esther Seha. If the stage were bigger, we would have all of you up here, for we can all be peacemakers. As Maya Sotrang put it yesterday, peacemaking takes many forms. As Shruta Scott Martinez put it, peacemaking is about love. And all of us, each in our own ways, can help to bring more love into the world. Even in the midst of news and headlines, they say so much about the opposite of these things. <laughs> Please now stand as you're able and be recognized for all the ways that we work in large ways and small toward realizing the Nobel laureate Martin Luther King Jr. called the beloved community. Closing now, I would like to welcome Pastor Sonia and Muslim Student Program Associate Fardosa Hassan for a blessing and sending as we head out into the world, into the new school year that is just beginning. Please help me welcome Sonia and Fardosa. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. I greet you in the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum. Which means, may peace be upon you. Which prayer is most beloved by God? According to Islamic tradition, it was asked, what is the best prayer to God? And it said, ask God from his bounty, for fairly God loves to be asked. So today, I start 
by asking God from his bounty to bless us, to give us increasing wisdom, patience, pure love, and strength to achieve our best, to see the best in our friends, our family, our community, our country, and our world, to shower us with his mercy. We ask him to brighten our heart with love, hope, and world peace. Amin, salam. A second blessing for the paradox of peace from the prophet Isaiah. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of God as the waters cover the sea. Let us go out refreshed for the work of love, justice, hope, and joy. <laughs>